featherweight. Did we just get a big clue? So Dana White contender series media afterwards, Dana gets asked about Henry Cejudo coming into the division and going right in against Volkanovsky. And don't forget, we don't have a lot of clues right now, but the one clue we do have from Henry, according to Henry, who I personally encourage you guys to take as the real Henry who's being sincere, says that he wants to come back, he wants to fight Volkanovsky, he's taking the first step, which is to enter the USADA testing pool. I bring that to you not to be redundant with yesterday's information. I bring that to you because Henry has not flirted with the idea of becoming a contender. He's not flirted with the idea of getting in there with Max. Yair, he's only going after Volkanovski. He's made it very clear that his story and message is champ, 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 which quite frankly is a damn good story. And there's only one guy who has the opportunity to tell it. We have no champ champs right now that can go into a third weight class, right? Even if you look at Amanda, she just can't make 125. So when I say Henry's the only person that can tell this story, and it's a pretty interesting one, he's playing this right. This is the big card. Is it enough? Is it enough to convince Dana White? All right. Hold that thought because Dana gets asked, Hey, are you going to let Henry slip in on a six over here, or are we still looking at Holloway Rodriguez? And Dana doesn't directly answer it, but he does have a little fun with the guy and says, what do you think I should do? Do you think I should keep Max in your ear as planned as the number one contender's bout, or do you think I should bring in a guy who hasn't fought, done anything, and over a year let him skip the line and let him fight with Volkanovsky. So I had a little fun with this back and forth, but Dana was letting us in on something. And this is very consistent. I mean, I can take you back two weeks ago when Nick Diaz was rumored if he beats Robbie Lawler to be going right in with Kamara Usman for a fight. That's a big fight and an interesting story. And Dana squashed it. He said, that's the dumbest thing in the world. Why would I ever put a guy who hasn't fought in five years in there against the current pound-for-pound pound best. He dismissed it. I mean, he left no room. I understand Nick and Henry are on different paths, right? One went out on a loss. One went out on a win. One went out in a fun fight. One went out as the champion of the world. One went out five years ago, and one went out 12 months ago. I get that they're different, but the message from Dana is still very consistent, which is come back, let's see what you got, you show me, we go from here. And this was not hard and fast. If you didn't see this interview, I do not want you to take away from my words that Dana has closed the book on the opportunity of Henry Volkanovsky being Henry's return fight. He hasn't. But he was pretty consistent and he did get pretty close. This was a major opportunity. I don't watch a lot of press conferences myself. Can you guys relate to that? I don't watch a lot of them. I watched that one. And Dana knew people were watching that one. But he did not do what traditionally he would do, which is to feel out the room, see which way the wind's blowing, talk with everybody. I think he's closed the book. I really do. He didn't say those words. I believe he's closed the book. Okay, let's say that I'm right. And let's go back to another door that Dana did open, which is Max versus Year. That one jumps off the page. I mean, as a fight... As a fight, that could be the greatest fight of all time. And I don't think any of you would disagree with me. It could be. And you can't say that about just any fight. Sometimes we know we're going to have a good fighter. We could have a good fighter. Oh, we got a little bit of a mismatch here. The mere fact, those two could be the greatest fight of all time. Can we all agree on that? Yes. Okay. But imagine it is. Imagine Max and your ear put on the greatest fight of all time, even if that's not literal, it's a broad stroke, it's going to be a wonderful fight. Imagine if they do. They're going to bludgeon each other for 25 minutes. That's what they do. They don't go hit double legs. They're not looking to pass guard. They're not trying to get to full mount. They're looking to punch and kick and knee and elbow each other, and they have up to 25 minutes to do it. What is my point? My point is, they're not going to have a quick turnaround. Volkanovski's already out. This match that I'm talking about, becoming the number one contenders match, isn't today. 
So if you do wait and make that the number one contender's bout, which is a glaring, it's a fantastic idea. You are just going to, like anything in life, right? One positive and then it accidentally creates something. The accidental creation, the byproduct will be Volkanovsky, who's done nothing wrong, has to remain unemployed for X amount of time. And that's the way it goes. That might be exactly what it is. But if we're going to show Volkanovsky a respect to the one and only thing that he asked for after defending his title against Ortega, don't make me wait. Move me up a weight class. Take me out of title contention, but get me to work. Okay, that means something to me. When Volkanovsky, who's never asked us for a damn thing, is asking us, the community, to get him a quick match, and the very first thing that we're confronted with is, do we need to put him out, let these two other guys that are clearly the top guys figure their business out, let them recover, let them recruit, do the negotiations, go into training camp, start the media tour, and then, I mean, we could be seven months. That's the long side of it, but we could be seven months. Or do you bring in Giga? Who's ready now? And those are your options. It's as simple as that. Henry is offering his services. Henry will qualify. Can Henry cut the line? Yeah, as a matter of fact, he could if he, if he could do a more seductive date. He could. Henry, who's re-entering the pool, has to sit four months. So Henry does not check the box of convenience. Henry's out. Do we want to run the gamble that either Max or your ear doesn't go out and have the most bludgeoning contest that Chael is speaking of? Do we run the, make the bet? They're going to get in, they're going to get out, they're going to be ready to go. Do we do that and try to turn the whole thing around quickly? Or do we go to Giga, who's ready right now? And I don't want to influence you, I'm reminding you. They're all, they're all pretty good options in fairness. But you can only pick one. If it were you, Dana asked last night. Dana asked a guy last night for advice. So let's extend Dana's openness. And I'm going to ask you Dana's question. Henry, the winner of Max Shaheer or Giga? Because your only fourth option is that Volkanovsky, wait. Wait. 